first you want to do is um, connect to the to the uh, to the amplifier. Of course, you need to uh, um, connect it to uh, to a wired network, so you don't have the possibility to to do this wirelessly. But um, in most cases, you don't you, you don't want to because it sits inside a rack or inside the cabinet. So uh, make sure that there is a network cable connected to it. You don't need to. Uh, um, have the IP address available. Of course, you can do that with a network scanner or see that in, inside your DCP server, uh, but there is a, a, an easier way to, uh, to select. So in this case, I want to um, yeah, uh, set up a CDA2 HD. What you do is you um, type in the model number, underscore serial number. The serial number can be found um, at the bottom of the device uh, on, a, on a sticker or on the, uh, the outside of, uh, of the packaging. Uh, dot local and if you type that in any browser you are able to log in to the web interface so there are three sections you have basic settings which are similar for the cda 4d and the cda 2 hd you have in and output settings so there you set up um yeah which input you want to use and yeah uh, what do you want to output so also the uh, speaker and subwoofer selection is made there and then there is a dsp configuration where you can a little bit alter your settings uh, and even have a, um, yeah, a, a, a even a user presets made uh, uh, easy. So what are the possibilities? So for information, you can set up uh, uh, um, a name for the uh, for the uh, uh, for the amplifier. So in in this case, I want to drive an ISW8, and we in this room we call it the launch. So it's then very easy. To, uh, um, yeah, to see what this amplifier is doing. We are able to set up the, a customer name, dealer name, and even an installer name, and the date when it's installed. Um, of course, you don't have to fill it in, but uh, especially when you have a bigger company where multiple people are working on projects, it's uh, sometimes nice to see um, yeah, which, who installed it and, and when. Uh, here you can see the, the, firm, the current firmware version, the serial, serial number uh, of the device and the current temperature. They can run pretty hot. You see, this is on for uh, quite some some days, um, but it, it's no worries that, uh, that it has a 45 degrees temperature. Then we have some basic network settings. So um, out of the box, it's automatically on DCP. Uh, if you want, you can set up a static IP, uh, do a DCP reservation or, or stuff like that. Um, that's all up to you. Then you have the power modes. Um, so uh, the three modes are always on, auto detect. So it will automatically power on and shut down after 50 minutes of no signal. Uh, or in my preference is using the 12 volt trigger, which always um, yeah, is very um, stable and direct. So when your, let's say your AVR is powering on, your uh, um, um, yeah, subwoofer amplifier is also powered on automatically. And same thing when you power it off. This is also a nice feature, especially when you use multiple uh, amplifiers within your system, uh, you are able to set a power mode delay. So uh, that, like I said, um, yeah, especially when you have multiple, you can set one on two seconds, maybe the second one on four seconds, so they don't power uh, on all at once, uh, which can sometimes, uh, um, yeah, you can have some trouble uh, with your fuse, um, but now they power on after each other. Um, so this is a nice feature, I think, uh, for uh, when using multiple units uh, within one system. There's also a wake on LAN functionality. Um, this is especially when you uh, want to connect this uh, via third party control system. Um, yeah, you should should this on. Uh, please note that the power consumption will be a little bit higher, of course, uh, when activating this, uh, this mode. Um, Next part is notifications. So you are able to set notifications. Um, first, you need to agree terms and conditions, and then you can have, um, yeah, let's say three notifications sent. So when uh, the temperature exceeds 90 degrees, so for the CDA2, that's, let's say, the threshold when, um, yeah, the, the unit is going into protect mode. Um, when a certain volume level is, is, is reached, so you can set it up um, the way you want or when uh, a device loses network connection. And of course, this is 
a laugh of because how do you know when it loses connection? When it's uh, uh, um, yeah, getting the network again, and it could be that you have a power outage or that you're, uh, you have trouble with your network. Um, it's good to know that you know that um, yeah, something happened with the device um, and it was not reachable for, for a certain moment of time. So um, those are the three uh, email alerts you can set up. You can set up uh, the email it needs to send. So it can be a support email address or your, or your own one, uh, just uh, how you want to set this up. And you can even send a test mail to see if everything is, uh, everything is working. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah, last uh, uh, part of the basic settings are settings management. So uh, in this, you, you can import uh, uh, settings or restore uh, uh, a certain uh, device, especially when you did some um, you know, more advanced settings. You really want to um, first save that so you can export those settings, but it, then it's also very easy to import them again. So uh, in the worst case that uh, uh, one unit fails, you can replace that quite easily import the same settings again and uh, everything is up and running quite uh, quite yeah quite soon and uh, it doesn't take a lot of time to yeah do the, the setup again also here you see an update firmware uh, a button we don't have an over the air update functionality so uh, the uh, um, the firmware is update manually uh, of course uh, like I said we will bring out a new uh, uh, firmware release uh, around May where we also have support for the for the CT8 series. Um, the latest firmware can be found on uh, the Bowser Wilkins website. Uh, it is quite a hassle to, to come there, but if you go to uh, Integrate Solutions, Home Audio, and then choose for Amplifiers, in the end, select Documentation in the uh, top right corner, and then you will see all the uh, available documentation. So you can download the latest firmware of both devices, the driver for Control 4, um, the Creston Home Driver and the Creston Simple Driver. So if we have more drivers available going forward, because we're looking always looking at also other integration, um, th those will be uh, posted on uh, on our uh, on our own website. And um, yeah, the firmware update is done manually. So that's there. There you can also lock settings. So put in a password. So uh, if a client really sees what's going on on this network and try to log in. He needs a password to uh, to be able to go into the device. Then some basic uh, uh, reboot and reset settings. Like I already said, there are no buttons on the device itself, only uh, a power button. So rebooting can be done, of course, uh, on the device itself. But it's uh, also quite convenient to do this from from the web interface. You can even reset the whole thing if you, uh, yeah, want to start fresh with a with a new setup. So this is basic settings. Then uh, the second tab is in and output settings, and here uh, where it gets interesting. So uh, in this case, um, we see a left and a right channel. That's because we, uh, by default, the mode of use is set to speakers. So we have two um, speakers to work with. Um, what we do here is select the input we want to use. Like I already mentioned, uh, we are able to use uh, the analog and uh, a digital input. Um, but also the nice thing is that you even see the inputs from the other devices here. So this is the AVB functionality that is already built in to the devices and extremely um, yeah, uh, helpful when you do a, a, a multi-room audio system, especially in a commercial or small commercial site like a, a nice hired restaurant or a retail store or st stuff like that, where you always want the same, have the same music, but maybe have other speakers or a, a, a room with the integrated subwoofer, um, yeah, it's quite easy to do this with the CDA4 uh, and the CDA2 in this case. So in this case, we we, uh, we simply want to do uh, to drive a subwoofer. Um, so in all cases, we want to select the bridge side load here. So we want to bridge the two uh, channels into one mono channel, and therefore we need to set this one up uh, on bridge side mode. Um, the web interface changes dynamically, um, um, yeah, depending on which settings you uh, you uh, you are putting in. So in this case, I uh, have an analog input. I have a bridge side load, so you quite uh, output wise, I only have one output to choose from. So here I can put in a name. So in this case, I want to drive an ISW8, and here I can select the preset. So here you can see all 
the oh all the uh subwoofer presets um from the available ci and ct uh subwoofers we have uh, we have available so you, you don't see the ct8 sw like i said that that will come in may but you do see the new iw8 uh the ct sw10 the 12 and the 15 inch so simply clicking the um uh yeah, the correct uh, model and you're more or less good to go. Um, if you use this in a, uh, yeah, an AVR setup, eh, so with an uh, AVR or an AV processor, uh, it's also very good to know that we have a trim level here. Uh, I, I counted out myself with the new Cinema, uh, Cinema 40 upstairs where we have a nice custom install setup with CI700 series, is that the level was a little bit, uh, um, comparing to the speaker levels, a little bit uh, on the low side. And here you can play with the trim level. So you can go, uh, in this case, from minus 5 to plus 19. So especially when you do uh, an Odyssey or direct calibration, you need to level uh, your subwoofers. And this is easily done with the, uh, the trim level setting uh, on the device. Here you have the volume output. So uh, at default, it's on let's say 30%, and also the turn-on volume is uh, is on 30%. Um, in most cases, you want to raise this, and also the turn-on volume, you want to be setting into a fixed volume, all depending on yeah which speaker you want to use, which setup, uh, what you put in here. But um, 30 is a good starting point. You immediately hear something out coming out of the subwoofer, uh, and then you are able to raise it to the desired volume you need in that, uh, that particular case. Last but not least are, is the DSP configuration. Um, so here we can um, yeah, um, do some modification uh, regarding the setup we, we made. Also, this is total uh, dynamic, uh, dynamic. So in this case, we uh, selected uh, a, 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 yeah, a preset made by, uh, uh, by, the, by the Bowers and Wilkins team. And therefore, we're not able to alter it this in, the, in, in that sense. So what we are able to do is put a te test signal in, especially when you, if you want to do an in-room calibration, see the response. This is really, uh, really helpful. And here we have some preset management. And especially if you uh, are a more advanced user and you really want to make your own presets, which is, uh, which is possible, and I will show you later on. Um, yeah, you can import, export uh, these presets, um, uh, rename them uh, whatsoever. So, um, this is in the preset management uh, menu. And these are the DSP settings. And because we selected uh, a Bowers or Wilkins preset, we are a little bit limited what we can set up here. So we uh, we can set up the listing mode to music or movie, depending where you want to use uh, uh, the subwoofer for. We have a phase correction. Uh, we can, uh, if, if needed, can set up uh, a delay. Uh, and we have some basic tone control. In this case, of course, only bass control because uh, um, yeah, we are we are now setting up uh, a subwoofer. So this changes all dynamically. Um, yeah, um, purely how you want to set up your uh, your your new CDA in, in that sense. So this is CDA two HD. Um, I also have two four Ds connected uh, um, um, to this. Uh, um, yeah, to to my system to show off. Uh, the possibilities there. Um, as you see, if you are um, not connected to the, the amplifier for some time, it, it, it uh, disconnected. The only thing you need to do is reload your page and then it uh, automatically connects to your, um, uh, yeah, to your uh, amp again. Um, basic settings are almost entirely the same as the CDA2, so I don't want to uh, go into that. Uh, what I do want to see, uh, show you is uh, the difference in, in an output setting. Of course, the CDA4 has four channels, and therefore you, you see those four channels here in the input source setup. Um, what I want to do with this one is I want to create uh, a distribution uh, yeah, music uh, mode. So I want to uh, be able to connect four um, Bowser Wilkins speakers to this, uh, to this unit. Um, I then um, yeah, have a source which I want to uh, connect via coaxial digital 
input, which I select here. Very uh, wise if you, uh, especially if you use the AVB functionality to rename your input. So in this case, I, uh, I went for a quite easy name, uh, music player. Of course, here you can see the trim level again, if you want to um, change that, but it's default at zero. Um, mode of use, you see here, um, yeah, one more uh, uh, yeah, possibility comparing to the CDA2. So we can say speakers, bridge side load, but even a 2.1 system, which I already coped in the in the presentation, but here you can see that in real life. So here you, you select, okay, where I want to use the CDA4 for. So in this case, I only want to uh, drive some speakers and I'm able to um, select in pairs which type of speaker I want to I want to run. So here you see that every um, CI 300, 600, even 700 and 800 speaker is in the library, even AM1 and uh, the Marine 6. So we're purely focusing on um, yeah, CI speakers uh, here, um, but it's um, very easy to to select the, the right speaker. Uh, if you select speaker, the right channel is automatically changed to that speaker as well. Um, then you have a mono and stereo uh, functionality, especially when you do a big commercial install or speakers are not positioned uh, uh, um, the way you really have a stereo uh, image, then you can uh, can put this on mono quite, uh, quite easy. Um, then you see that you need to select your speaker and then you're also able to um, yeah, select a different speaker if you have it on mono uh, mode. I will now go back to stereo again, and then you see that it automatically uh, also copies the, the speaker to, uh, to the right channel. There is a possibility to, to, to set up a, 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 an output source priority, uh, especially when you use it as a a music mode and you have, let's say, a public address system, um, yeah, you are able to set up uh, a priority that if a certain source is, is outputting, that it automatically switches to that uh, that source. So that's done in, in this mode. The zone uh, um, configuration is also quite interesting. Um, you, see, you see that um, output one and two are now set on zone one and output three and four are set on zone two especially when you use this in uh, a crest one or a control four environment this is a, a, an important setup uh, to choose um, but also if you have let's say a big um, living kitchen or a big uh, dining area where you want to play four speakers instead of two uh, it's easy to set this up as a one zone four output uh, uh, amplifier by simply clicking on uh, um, yeah, zone one for output three and three and four, it follows, let's say, um, the, the 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 first zone, and yeah, you are able uh, to only connect one uh, input to the amplifier, and it will be outputted to all four channels. Um, then you also have an output volume uh, control. Of course, this can be uh, controlled by uh, the third-party um, drivers we have available. If you uh, use a source or an audio matrix uh, in front of this amplifier, you will, you want to put this on 90 or 100 percent and um, do the volume control um, via via another uh, via another way. So this is uh, very flexible. You can do it do this in in the amplifier itself. Uh, so maybe uh, yeah, more or less use it as a, as an integrated amplifier. Or uh, if you have a bigger system, uh, the volume control is done uh, by another uh, by another source. Let's say. The speed configuration a little bit the same as uh, we already saw with the ISW8. So you uh, are able to play big noise from all of your uh, all of your channels. Um, you can set up on your own presets, and you have uh, some simple DSP settings here, like delay, um, bass, and treble control, and you can set that up per speaker. If I now go back to um the settings tab and i will not select an bowser wilkins speaker but we also pre, um yeah pre-configured nine user presets let's say uh, this on preset two and 
I will go back to the DSP configuration. Um, and I, when I scroll down, you see that you have a lot more opportunities here. So here you can set your own curve, also depending if you want to do an uh, in-room measurement um, to cope with some, um, yeah, some acoustic uh, uh, um, trouble, let's say, within the within the room. You are able to set your own uh, EQ um, uh, with the frequency uh, Q setting uh, gain, uh, stuff like that. So this is more for the advanced user. Also here you are able to set a crossover if you, if you want to. Um, that's only uh, advisable, of course, if you use uh, use a subwoofer in that uh, that room. Um, so this gives you a lot more flexibility, but only use this if you know what you're doing. Uh, this is more the advanced uh, stuff if you really want to um, yeah, make a preset yourself. Again, you can save your presets here um, if, if you want to, um, and then also be able to copy it into another device uh, if needed. Last thing I want to show is um, setting up a 2.1 system. So I have a, a, a second um, uh, CDA4 uh, HD here. Um, cool thing is I can select the same digital source I use with my first one. So uh, in this case, it will be uh, outputting the same music as, as my first CDA4. Um, here I can say, okay, I have a 2.1 system. In a 2.1 setting, uh, zone output one and two are always speaker, three and four are always subwoofer. And also this, this changed dynamically. So um, I can um, yeah, select any power speaker again, and then I can select here the desired subwoofer I want to drive. Um, so very easy, very flexible. Um, yeah, last mode I didn't go, but uh, which I'll go quite quickly is the bridge side load mode. And then you bridge both um yeah so all four channels so one and two are bridged into one times 250 watts and three and four are bridged into two times 250 watt and here you can see that you have the presets for all, all the isw um you can use two isw within one room as also here you can say okay i'll, I'll use them in the same zone but you can also do it totally independent of each other so let's say i have an isw three uh, in my in my dining room and an ISW4 in my um, uh, in my kitchen, I can really easily set this up. Uh, I have to make sure that this zone output is treated as a separate zone. And now you can use the CDA4 driving two subwoofers totally independent of each other. So this is a real yeah nice feature uh, I think, which you know, makes sure that you always use all channels from uh, from your amplifiers. Check out more videos below and support our channel by hitting the like button. If you want any of our latest videos, please remember to subscribe and check the bell icon so you'll get notified whenever our new content is released. Please leave any thoughts or questions in the comments section. Thanks for watching.